So in this lesson, we're going to talk about spacecraft, the design of considerations for them, and the actual operations. And we're going to start off with the space environment. I mean, what, what is different about engineering something to go in space as opposed to engineering a, a car or a hi-fi or something on Earth? And I guess a lot of it is the fact it has to be launched. That's right. And, and I think this is kind of the, the difference uh, immediately when you're talking about a car or a computer or, or clothing is it doesn't have to really go anywhere or experience a essentially violent trip to its final destination. Yeah. So the first step is you have to survive this. And this is going to be pretty loud and pretty violent. And for most rockets, what they actually do is in doing the early test flights, yes. they will measure the vibration levels at all the different stages of the takeoff and the G-forces. But it's yes. mostly the vibration. Actually, the sound is really bad. That's right. I mean, sound is just high frequency vibration. And what they can do is they can simulate it on these tables. This is one we've got up at uh, Mount Stromlo. Uh, adaptively called the shaker table because it's a table that shakes. And you could program this to have, for example, a Falcon 9 launch or That's something right. like this, and it would have the uh, right profile of vibrations to match it. And you really want to make sure nothing comes loose in your satellite as you get launched. Because that's the key. It's not just shaking it as much as you can. It's shaking it in the right way to prevent certain frequencies actually oscillating through your equipment. That's right. So you have to know what frequencies of vibration, what the amplitudes are, how it changes at different stages of the launch, and then reproduce it. And, and you were talking about, I mean, this room, even though it just simulates this launch on this little table, you have to wear essentially soundproof heavy air muffs because that building gets loud when it's going. Now that's part of it. So let's yeah. say we've now got into space, we've survived that, now we have to deal with living in a vacuum. And it's very different from living in a vacuumized world, i.e. Uh, here where we actually have pressure and atmospheric conditions. I mean, one thing you need to make sure is you've got no closed spaces inside your spacecraft, because they are, they'll probably burst when you get to space because of the pressure inside. Yep. Everything has to be able to leak out smoothly. Um, but also, you know, I mean, test them in things like this. This is our Mount Stromlo test facility where we can put things in a big vacuum chamber. Yep. But for example, plastics. Okay. Uh, it depends on the exact plastic. A lot of plastics, some of the chemicals will come out and disappear into space, leaving perhaps a very brittle... So essentially it can kind of like seep into space? Yes, outgassing, because a typical plastic is a combination of many chemicals, some are more volatile uh... than others, and in a vacuum some of them will escape, and that might well destroy your plastic, or even worse, that volatile stuff can then condense other parts uh... of your spacecraft. What about other materials? Well, oil. Okay. Lubricants in general are a real problem. I mean, the oil will do the same sort of stuff. So you need to use a solid lubricant. But okay. actually, some solid lubricants, like graphite, is often used as a solid yes, lubricant. That's right. But graphite actually in space becomes, um, actually will scar things. It, um, it, it, uh, it's not usable in space. So essentially, the materials that we use here on Earth are kind of different than the ones we have to use in space. Yes, yeah, so many things that we use on Earth don't work in space. Okay. Uh, some things actually work better. For example, glass gets about three times stronger in space. Really? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> surprised me when I found out. <laughs> you would think it'd become more brittle, but instead it... And actually, a lot of substances get stronger. We think what's happening is because there are microscopic cracks in most pieces uh, of glass, okay. which have air inside the cracks, and that air There's leaks out, yeah. and actually the cracks then tend to seal themselves a okay. bit more. So it's, what you basically says is you can't just take some substance from your engineering toolkit and slap it on a spacecraft. You would have to make sure it would actually work in space. And so there's a very strong tendency to use what other people have used before. Yeah. These would be things that are space certified. So if you know that a particular lubricant worked yeah, in the last yeah. space mission... Is then it's likely it's going to work in this one as well. Yeah. And, I, and I guess it's also, the, there's the vacuum as well, but you also then have temperature changes as well in that vacuum when you're orbiting in low Earth orbit. And ultraviolet, for that's instance, right. ultraviolet. So it's not just the vacuum. Yes. But you know, use something that's been tested before and test it on Earth in your vacuum chamber. Okay. 